Hey guys, Nick here with another episode of 9 to 5 Crypto. Today we have a story about the results of Crypto.com buying the Staples Center. We also have a story about Citibank beefcaking it up for crypto. Yes, beefcaking is now a word if it wasn't before. And Algorand is also bringing in more and more institutions. So that's good news for the crypto space. Lastly, we have some words from the president himself, Joe Biden. And there are some big words. And if you have a keen eye, you might already know what they're about. Anyhow, guys... Let's get rolling. All right, guys, for story number one, we have the results of Crypto.com buying the Staples Center last week. Crypto.com naming agreement paid for itself after coin price surges. Just how much did it surge? The Crow token has surged more than 55% in the past seven days as of Monday and reached a record on Sunday, according to pricing from CoinGecko, and is now the 13th biggest by market capitalization at about 18 billion dollars pretty impressive it's almost in the top 10 spot wow so let me know down in the comments below were you guys crypto.com fans do you use the exchange were you hodlers before this or are you just jumping in and buying the fomo now let me know down in the comments below the resulting pr doubled its price token or token price and led to a nine dollar or nine dollar not nine dollars nine billion dollar run up in market cap Meltem Demir's chief strategy officer of CoinShares International said on Twitter the deal paid for itself approximately 13x over that would have been a good trade <laughs> and the deal brought up numerous citations of the same phenomena with dot-com companies that made such packs in the late 1990s and early 2000s not all of which ended well for the name sponsor. So there we go. We have another parallel in comparison to the dot-com boom with the cryptocurrency surges that we're experiencing today and the bullish action that we've gotten and all these kind of institutions starting to jump in. Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think a lot of these projects are going to be around five to 10 years from now? Do you think there's going to be consolidation of projects due to regulatory you know, behaviors coming from the SEC? Or do you think something different? Just let me know. All right, taking a look at the crypto.com coin chart or otherwise known as Crow token. You can see it's had a pretty big run up since that announcement in the news where it jumped from roughly 30, what is that? 39, yeah, 39.33 all the way peaking at about, uh, about 80 cents, 79 cents, currently trading at 71 cents. So you know, it's had roughly a 100% run up after that news. So that's pretty impressive gains. Again, I'd already asked you, but you know, let me know what you're doing. Are you are you FOMOing in or were you already in before and you're just smiling on your way to the bank? <laughs> I hope you're already smiling on the way to the bank. But if you are FOMOing in, I hope it has some more run up left for you, truly. All right, guys, story number two, City plans to hire 100 staffers for beefed up crypto division. Global banking powerhouse City is hiring 100 people to beef up its blockchain and digital assets divisions, according to a person familiar with the bank's plans. So we have an insider. He has the sauces, you know, the Boston version of sources. We are focused on assessing the needs of our clients in the digital asset space, said City in its email statement. Prior to offering any products and services, we are studying these markets as well as the evolving regulatory landscape and associated risk in order to meet our own regulatory frameworks and supervisory expectations. Interestingly enough, the city memo shared with Coindesk said that in addition to the senior roles announced Monday, the company intends to hire additional talent over the next several months and will be posting roles across ICG businesses, functions, and the ICG business development team. So guys, let me know what you think about that down in the comments below. Do you think that we're gonna see this across the board with other banking institutions as they you know, dip their toes, so to speak, into crypto? They've, a lot of them have probably already been investing in this stuff and you know, for a while, I digress. But do you think that they're going to have a lot of game theory, public game theory, where they're competing and showing off more and more expansions with their crypto divisions? Because I, I think a lot of these banking divisions are going to have to kind of like, you know, move with the times with decentralizations, with DeFi, and actually get on board or get, you know, quote unquote wrecked, as the kids say. Um, but let me know down in the comments below. Do you see, you know, 
Um, any other banking groups, you know, Chase jumping into this headstrong, like a lot more being more aggressive about a crypto division. I would imagine as their consumers also become younger and younger and their older populations, you know, uh, move forward in life that they probably have to, you know, adapt from um, a demographic standpoint as well. All right, guys, story number three, Algorand project raises 3.6 million to make cross chain DeFi friendly for big investors. I already like the sound of that because you know what we need? We need more accessibility, more standardization, more adoption. We want it to become normalized to where, hey, not just you know you and I are into crypto, your grandma is, your grandpa is. We need to make it so easy for you know uh, a giant organization to scale in you know business investments as well. So we need investments at scale that are scalable, right? C3's ambitious plan to allow decentralized finance, DeFi liquidity to flow across blockchains was also backed by Golden Tree Asset Management, Cumberland, Parify Capital, Mechanism Capital, Borderless Capital, Node Capital, yes, that's a lot of capitals, and Digital Currency Group, the parent company of Coindesk, which, you know, if you've listened to BitBoy Crypto, he goes on about Digital Currency Group being kind of the mafia of crypto and you know there's a lot going on with digital currency group so we'll probably take a dive on that for another day but cryptocurrency trading grew out of retail exchanges and developer-led blockchain projects in contracts contrast to legacy finance which started with institutions building infrastructure that suited their needs as such the concept of prime brokerage in traditional finance a bundle of services often offered by investment banks that include lending cash management and netting is gradually being replicated in the cryptocurrency world. So yeah, everything's moving more and more into blockchain. Interesting. So there's some other key takeaways here. I'll let you dive into more of the technicals here. But the key takeaways is that C3 will operate a global clearing engine so that users can lock collateral in one place and use it across a range of positions in the same way that prime brokers act as a hub for collateral management in traditional finance. C3 is an ambitious idea. It bridges the gap between tra uh, TradFi and DeFi, trading by completely rethinking how we manage collateral across both blockchains and DeFi protocols. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna leave you a little bit of this chunk right here. Take a deep dive and look at Algorand Builders. That's your homework assignment. Um, I don't wanna just read you an entire article, but I do want you guys to check out my you know, links down below. There's just all the sources all in one little area. And you can just see, you know, everything that we went over today. All right. And for the final thing here, I told you we had a message from Biden today. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you the, with this real quick and we'll get rolling. He's also underscored the importance of the Fed taking a more proactive role in the months and years ahead and making sure that our financial regulations are staying ahead of emerging risk, be they from innovations and in cryptocurrency or the practice of less regulated non-bank financial institutions. Having served as vice president during the depths of the... So there you go, guys. The president is now talking about cryptocurrency. So we've been talking about institutions diving in, main, you know, mainstream adoption. Have it, you know, have it however you like, say it however you want, but we have a lot going on in the crypto space. We have a lot of adoption happening. We have a lot of institutions jumping in, and now the president's talking about cryptocurrency. Welcome to 2021, folks. Anyway, if you enjoy these five to 10 minute videos and you want to see me next time talk about some more news or, you know, do crypto dives and, you know, fundamental analysis, feel free to join me. All right, guys. Until next time, stay safe out there. And remember, coffee's on me.